Do you even love her, Ethan? Of course I love her. She's my daughter. But how am I going to provide for her and pay you child support if I'm not working? Like I said, we're shooting for three weeks. If it's not one thing, it's another with you. When are you going to be a responsible father, Ethan? What happened to you? You never used to be like this. Is that my dad? Yes, sweetheart. Can I talk to him, please? Your daughter wants to talk to you. Hi, Daddy. Hey, sweetheart. Guess who's here with me? Who? Oh. Brianna and Melanie. Hi, Hi, Mr. Shaw. Hey, girls. How you doing? We've been good. Just having fun and enjoying the weather. How are your parents? Good. They dropped us off so we could play with Allie, but they said they'll be back to pick us up before it gets dark. Okay. Make sure you tell them I said hello. Okay. Dad, when am I gonna see you again? I miss you. Hello? 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 Yes, yeah, it's definitely a place where the black guy dies first. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm Derek. Leah. Nice to meet you. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining me on this journey to make the greatest horror film since ever. <laughs> As you all know, my name is Sean Bisher, and I'm excited to have every one of you on board to make this film. Uh, please, let me show you to your work slash living areas for the next three weeks. Don't worry about your bags. Nika will take care of those. <laughs> Ethan. I'm really glad you could make it. No cable, nor Wi-Fi. How do you survive without a phone? Oh, we have plenty of phones. But if you're referring to cell phone reception, you can generally find some in some areas out back. And how old is this house? Uh, it was built in the late 1800s. My great-great-grandfather Jasper Bisher built it. It's been handed down from generation to generation. Definitely smells like it. <laughs> so you live here by yourself? No. Far too big to live in by myself. Uh, Nico lives here. And my Gammy. Gammy? My grandma. <laughs> this is her house now. And where's Gammy now? Uh, she is in her room. But you'll all meet her when the time is right. Uh, your rooms, though, are upstairs. Please, let me show you. Abigail and Leah, the two of you will be sharing a room. I hope that's okay. That's fine. I'm okay with it. Great. Gentlemen, I'm afraid that means the same for you, too. Ethan, is that okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. why are you asking if he's okay with it, not me? It's all right. It's, it's fine. Great.
Whoa, what the hell is that all about? I guess it's as good as mine. Mm. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? I got valuable shit in there. Just gonna let it slide. Take your Ethan Shaw, the Ethan Shaw. Come on, man, come on, come on. <laughs> hey, come on, we're gonna be rooming together. You just gotta tell me who you are, come on. I am Ethan. <laughs> Why did you say that from the jump? Didn't think it was you, important. You didn't think it was a big, dude, we learned about you in film school. <clears throat> hey, my, my name is uh, Derek Chalmers, but my, my friends call me DC. Derek, it is then. Wow, okay. Looks like we'll be sharing a bed together. I don't mind. So what happened to you anyway? Nothing. I mean, nothing if you're not counting the drugs, alcohol, and hose. Dinner will be served promptly at 7 p.m. Good. I'm starving. Let's eat. Enjoying your meal? Yes, I can pick for a full. I think what he's trying to say is that this food is the bomb. Compliments to the chef. I'll let Gammy know you liked it. Your grandma made all of this? Mm-hmm. Gammy loves to cook. She makes all the meals around here. You wait till you have her pancakes. Well, we can get breakfast here, too. <laughs> Even when I was making student films, I always made sure the crew ate right. I couldn't pay them, but I could feed them. <laughs> Another tradition I like to keep going is roll call. What's that? That's where you stand up, make your introduction, and tell everybody a little bit about yourself. I'll go first. <clears throat> My name is Sean Bisher, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> but seriously, though, I'm a third-generation horror enthusiast. Gammy introduced me to blood, guts, and gore at the tender age of three. At 14, I made my first film, a little five-minute short about neighborhood haunted house. <laughs> Let's just say I'm glad I got my really bad work out of the way early. <laughs> I've been in the business 30 years, and I love it. There's truly nothing else I would rather do with my life. I don't know where I'd be without it. Abigail, you're next. My name is Abigail Easton. Stand up. Uh, my name is Abigail Easton, and I'm a writer. Uh, I'm from Daytona, Florida. I went to Full Sail. Yo, I, I went there. Okay. Uh, 
Um, and that's about it. <laughs> what made you want to be a writer? I guess I like telling stories. Good answer. I like telling stories too. I'm Leah Lopez. I'm from Miami, AKA the 305. And I want to be a sound engineer. You either are a sound engineer or you aren't. There are no maybes in filmmaking. Claim it, make it yours. I am a sound engineer. I went to Miami Dade, majored in film. I'm Cuban, love being a Latina. And I wanted to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be the sound engineer on the greatest horror film ever. <laughs> I was surprised that you called actually, uh, being that I've never worked on a film and all, um, but I think, no, I know I'm ready. Yo, 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 it's your boy, Derek Chambers, but my peeps call me DC. I'm a fellow Full Sail alum, like you guys already heard, and I'm the best DP this side of motherfucking Mississippi. I'll admit this is my first feature, but I was built for this. Got this. I can't wait till we actually start shooting because that's when I'm at my absolute best. Hands down. I'm Ethan Shaw. The Ethan Shaw. No. Just Ethan Shaw. That's about it. Come on, Ethan. You can do better than that. No, I can't. Can I can I go for him? Please, please. Let me let me go. I got you. I'm not gonna let you down. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ethan Shaw. Ethan made a name for himself with his very first film at the tender age of 20. Johnny's Room, which made him a highly sought after director. He followed it up again with his next film, which was even better. By the age of 22, Ethan was Mr. Fucking Hollywood until he pissed it all away. The word is better than mine. How did he piss it all away? Oh, do you, do you want to tell me what you want? Nah, <laughs> I got this. Uh, he got addicted to coke because we all know that crack is whack. Showed up to set drunk, late, fucking anything he can touch. Hollywood all but blacklisted the man. Not to mention his, uh, his baby mom is suing him for child support. You know, just your typical E, true Hollywood tragic story. It's not just Greg. What? I Googled him. Hey, Ethan. Hey, my bad for calling you out on dinner, man. My bad, bro. What are you doing? You mad for real? Nah. No kiss, no no hugs. And then there was one. show them you wait and see I'll show them I'll show them Ethan, walk with me, talk with me. All right. And you have been unusually quiet since you got here. And I know you must have some questions for me. You are directing the film, after all. 
You're probably wondering, what have I gotten myself into? That head crossed my mind. Mm -hmm. You've got a bunch of college kids. Inexperienced college kids at that, mm -hmm. working on what's supposed to be the best horror film ever. Mm -hmm. And where's the rest of your crew? I tried making this picture with Union guys. It wouldn't come together. So I figured, why not try fresh talent? As for the rest of the crew, they're gonna be here soon. I brought a handful of you out here early so you could all get to know each other a little bit better. It's really necessary if I'm gonna pull off what I'm trying to pull off. And what are you trying to pull off? Like I said, make the best horror film ever. We're not that different, you and I. How do you figure that? <laughs> we both tasted the success of Hollywood. We know what it's like to be elevated, bolstered around like kings before being spit out and forgotten. Left to rot like roadkill on the side of the street. But we didn't let that stop us. Despite public opinion, we rose from the ashes and voyaged forth. We're survivors. What if I told you this film was our chance to get back to that grand stage? What if I told you the glam, the lights, the attention? You can have it all back. What would you do for it? Excuse me, I gotta take this. Hello? I think we found him, Gammy. I think we found our star. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going hard, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> Are you ready for your safety meeting? Born ready. Born ready? Okay, let's see it. I'm lucky I have you here. This place would be hella boring without you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I kind of like you too. This smidge. <clears throat> Whatever. Nice. <coughs> mm. Are you sure we can smoke in here? Yeah. What about Ethan? What about him? He's your roommate? Was. What's up with you two? You went in on him pretty hard at dinner. There's just something about him I don't like, okay? That dude just gives me a shady vibe. I feel that same way about Sean. Mm. I'm a girl, and we trust her intuition. Something's not right about him. What grown-ass man lives with his grandma? <coughs> what do you mean? Cammy? <laughs> Cammy made this. Cammy made that. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me, the whole shit seems suspect. You know? Well, if anything happens, I got you, right? I got your back. You ready for level two? It's kind of hot in here. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. What? Nothing. I 
almost shot you. Why do you have a gun? So are you going to tell me why you have that gun? Because it's my right as an American. Do you bring it to all your movie sets? I take it everywhere I go. I never liked guns. Not even water guns. Not me. I've always loved them. They're always around as a kid, too. My granddad had this beautiful shotgun that sat above the fireplace in the den. Till this day, that's my favorite gun. And all the violence and carnage that's associated with them don't bother you? In my experience, this world doesn't give you much of a choice. We always have a choice. What were you doing out there all alone, anyway? Well, your childhood was filled with guns. Mine with the outdoors. The house I was raised in sat on a quarter acre of land and was surrounded by trees. I always found myself sitting under one, just thinking, daydreaming, and eventually writing. So that's where I go when I look for inspiration. It's my safe place. There are no safe places. Danger surrounds us everywhere we go. It's a morbid outlook on things, don't you think? Thanks for the ride to the store. Oh, no problem. I had to get some stuff for the house anyway. Exactly. I need to find some kind of time to do something. <laughs> okay. Uh, you get what you need, and I'll meet you at the register. That guy looks so familiar. Look, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna talk to you later, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. That movie again? I thought y'all learned a lesson from the last time. What happened the last time? A disaster. That's why. I'm not following. You don't know, do you? Just like Sean keeping in the dark. You gotta be careful with that Sean Bisher. He's new he appears to be. Then who is he? I don't know. Ask the last film crew that was here. I mean, I don't really keep track of people after we wrap, so. No, no, no. She, she told me where she was. Okay, she, she told me we were gonna meet up afterwards, and, and she, she just wouldn't just disappear like that. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, she's a grown woman, so 
Maybe she went out of town. Maybe she's at the beach. I can't help you. I'm sorry. Just tell me where she is. Just tell me where she... Just tell me where she is, okay? I just want to know. Yeah, calm down right now. I can't help you, okay? I can't do anything for you. Sorry. You're a liar. Okay. You're a fucking liar! I'm liar. You know crazy. exactly where she is. Get out of here. These people are crazy. Tell me what that was all about back there. What was what all about? Uh, the argument you were having with the woman in the back of the store. That, uh, that was nothing. And that cashier said something about a previous film crew. Oh, she did, did she? Yeah. Well, what happened to the previous film crew? What happened was they came out here to make a film. And between budgets and talent schedules, we couldn't make the film. I don't know, man. I mean, the cashier seemed pretty upset, and so did the girl you were arguing with. Look, Ethan, I'm gonna drop a little nugget on you about small towns, okay? They don't like outsiders. Especially ones that threaten to turn their hick town into the next Hollywood. I wouldn't put too much energy into these people. I don't. What do we have here? Ah, <sighs> look. I hope he knows you. We're not filming in this. That's why you bring your own equipment. Oh, yeah? What do you think your little Zoom recorder is saying? Hmm? Look, if this film is as big as Sean says it is, we're going to need better equipment. For God's sake, Abby, fucking use a damn laptop. Hey, Abby, how you doing over there? Good? Huh? Okay. Now, this is more my speed, my appetite, my flavor. Oh my gosh, look at the legs and the body on this beauty. Oh my. Mm. This is a vintage Panasonic, manufactured in 1987. Classic. You know your cameras. Told you, best DP to side of motherfucking Mississippi. <laughs> I'll leave you two to get to know the equipment better. Abigail, would you come with me, please? You should get for me. I'm DP and it's your director. We can definitely use it at some point, depending on. How's the script writing coming? I'm making some good notes, I'm focusing on character development, and I think I should be ready to start writing soon. Good. When creating your protagonist, Make sure you choose characteristics that align with the narrative of the film. Is he a family man? Is he a betting man? Is he a man's man? When his back is up against the wall, what is he going to do? What does he have to lose? Do you know what empathy is? The ability to share and feel the feelings of another. Every great script captures empathy in a way that brings the characters to life. Now, if you want to be a truly great writer, you have to write truly great scripts. Do you know the secret to writing truly great scripts? 
practice? <laughs> practice ain't never hurt nobody, but no, that's not what I'm going for. Did you feel that? Feel what? That uncomfortable feeling you're emitting. I sat down next to you on this bed and you felt tense, apprehensive, confused even. A secret to writing a hero that everyone will remember is vulnerability. You have got to be open gotta go deeper than you've ever gone before where it is dark and scary and mucky and it's where comfort and security go to die leaving behind only the purest form of yourself of all of us there's only one thing that can survive there one thing only I want you to go to your safe place and I want you to let all the fear in and then don't be afraid to make it your bitch can you do that for me I could try I don't need you to try I need you to make it happen. Can you do that for me? I could do that for you. Good. So let's see what's button for. <laughs> so are you gonna tell me or what? Ow! See, that's how you go with your equipment. Okay. Hey, <clears throat> I got something to confess to you. Yeah? What's that? So you're like one of the main reasons I became a filmmaker? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I guess it was probably when I was like 11 or 12. I must have been on my fourth foster home. And... Uh, this one was by far the worst. Yeah. I got the scars and the cigarette burns to prove it. Every night was just a particular chaos and horror for me. Except for one night. Nah. One night, something made me feel like I was someone else, somewhere else. Gave me a glimmer of hope. It was your movie. Heartbroken. I, I'll admit, I wasn't too crazy about the storyline. But uh, the visual, just the visual story you told was just some of the best I've ever seen, still to this day. The direction, the, the angles and the lighting, just brilliant. Brilliant, my man. I knew right then and there that I wanted to be a filmmaker. And uh, I would tell anyone that would listen, uh, even my foster parents, they, uh, they would laugh, of course, but shit, <laughs> you see me now, right? Wait a minute. You remembered the scene in the kitchen with the uncle? Yes. That was the trippy ass scene. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you how I did it. Does a bear in the woods wipe his ass with a fluffy white bunny? I don't know what that means. <laughs> that means yes. 
Yes, of, of course. Of course I want the great Ethan Shaw to teach me, man. God, yes. All right, let me see if I remember this blocking correctly. Um, Leah, I'm gonna need your help with this. All right, I need you to stand right here. Okay. Martha Bisher, is she related to you? She's my gammy. Whoa, that uh, that, how, that woman was your grandma. <laughs> yeah, she was a she is an actress. She starred in over fifty films. This one was always my favorite, though. This film led to this very moment. It all started with gammy. I like how at the end it showed the shadow instead of the actual murder. Yeah. A great director, Ethan, does a great job of showing fear in action. <laughs> See, that's the beautiful thing about horror. It's predicated on the universal ideology that we all desire illusion. We have a fundamental need to be tricked. It's the trick that makes the treat sweet. You're early! Yes, we decided to draw straight here instead of spending the night in Fort Pierce. You cool with that? Of course. Yes, please come in. Yes. <laughs> I'll get someone to help you with the bags. Nico! This will just take a minute. Straight. Everyone, I'd like to introduce you to our actors, Tasha and Philip. Hey y'all, hey, what's, what's up? up? What up? What up? <laughs> this is Derek. Hey. Leah. Ethan. And our writer, Abigail. Abigail, what's up, girl? Me and you need to talk. I need some more scenes in the script. Maybe you could write me in some more scenes, girl. <laughs> Maybe. Well, uh, listen, it's getting very late. How about we all get to know each other over breakfast? I'm sure you two would like to rest after your long drive. Yes. All right. Your rooms are right this way. Let me show you. All right. Holla at y'all later, especially you, Abigail. <laughs> Tissue, so I came in here. It's 
coming to get you for breakfast. Oh, um, I never got a chance to thank you for last night. What'd I do? You thought I was in danger and you came running. That's more than what most people would do. That was nothing. I did that for anybody. No, you wouldn't. I truly believe that you don't care about anybody else here, and if they were in danger, you wouldn't bat an eye. If you believe that, you've got me pegged all wrong. What are you guys doing up here? Breakfast is getting cold. Go eat. Baby, breakfast, that's what I'm talking about. Food. I gotta find cell service on the outside. Uh, let me get us a couple cups of coffee and I'll meet you out there. If you don't mind, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. OK. I'll be in the yard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dang, bro, you might want to chew. <laughs> hey, does he always eat like this? Like a broke college kid? Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even blame him because these pancakes is popping. Mm -hmm. And this bacon? Yeesh. Mm -hmm. Yo, Sean been cooking like this for y'all every day? That's what about to do. Get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. He been making y'all breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Gambling her. Who? Gambling. Sean's grandmother. Mm -hmm. According to him, she makes all of these meals. Mm. Shit, I should have known. Ain't nobody cooking like this but a damn granny. Mm -hmm. Anyway, where's she at? Because I need the recipe for these damn pancakes. Tell me. Mm. That's just the thing. Like, none of us have ever seen her. Like, seen her cooking? No, like ever. She's like a ghost. A ghost that cooks bomb-ass food? Don't hit on my Grammy. Why? <laughs> Move! Get <laughs> out <of> here. <laughs> so, nobody got here for that? No one ever does. Yo, you blocked me? Cora, I want to speak to my daughter. Unblock me now. You OK? Yeah. Just some personal bullshit. I'll be all right. Sure? Yeah. What do you want to talk to me about? Can we sit? I don't know how to ask you this. Ask me what? I know you're not a thief, but I need you to steal something for me. Well, actually, borrow, because we are going to return it. But yeah, first, it's going to be stealing. Steal what? On a desk in Sean's room, there's a script with the title of the movie that I'm supposed to be writing. Wait a minute, I'm confused. Why are you supposed to be writing a script if we already have one? I don't know. Which is why I need to read the script. It's not uncommon for producers to want a complete rewrite, but I haven't been able to come up with anything so far. So if I could just see what he already has and maybe get an idea of what he's looking for. I'll do it. You will? Thank you. <laughs> I'm not normally a criminal. It's just that this is my big break, and I really don't want to mess things up. You know how it is. Not that you messed up so you should know how it is, but we all mess up. It's a part of life. You just happen to do yours publicly, which is fine. 
I should probably stop talking now. Yeah, you probably should. <laughs> the truth is, I wasn't ready for the fame and what came with it. And I made the mistakes any 19-year-old would have. And I just did it publicly, like you said. Well, if you ask me, I think you're about due for a comeback. I hope so. Now look, I'm gonna steal this for you. We need to do it later. And I'm gonna need a diversion. I wanted to know if we could talk horror movies. My favorite subject. Come on in. Please. Talk to me. All right, well, you spoke about the different rules and disciplines that every horror film follows. And since we're making the best horror film ever, I mm -hmm. uh, wanted to know what rules do you think that this film should follow? Okay. Well, well, to me, there are five essential elements to every great horror movie. One, fear. Two, a shower scene. Three, unsuspecting victims. Four, a great big house. And five, Seems my room's the popular room tonight. Excuse me. Hey. Can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Where were we? Number five. Right. Five. A twist. You gotta have a twist. See, horror movies are tricky. You can't just kill people for 90 minutes. So there's a lot of fluff. But if you can make the fluff mean something at the end, you got a jackpot. What would be a good twist for this movie? You gotta establish these elements in order, all right? So first you have to establish fear. Now how do we do that? You're the director, Ethan. <laughs> I'll leave that to you. But, uh, I'm gonna leave you with that, Ethan, all right? Tomorrow is just a killer of a day and I need to get some rest. You should too. Knock him dead, man. You got there. I'm just journaling. <laughs> I write before I go to bed. It helps soothe my mind. Does anything but that for me. <laughs> Thought of my innermost feelings conveyed on a sheet of paper in a book. Mm. Makes me feel exposed. <laughs> All the reason why you should have one. It helps, Ethan. You know. When I was a kid, my parents had a lot of arguments. I can remember so many times standing on the top of the staircase, just screaming at them. Just stop it, you're scaring me. After that, they just continued in a more hushed voice. To this day, I wonder if whispers have more power and depth when we speak. If yelling is the unraveling of a marriage, then 
whispers must be the war of total destruction. Anyway, I would take my journal and hide under the covers with a flashlight and I would write. That was just my way of making everything right. <clears throat> well, I have a gift for you. Damn, Smokey, you're killing my shit. <coughs> yo, oh, wait, are you okay? Are you, are you all right? Are you okay? Oh, hell no, 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 no. I just got up here. No, no, you, no, you go. Nah. <coughs> what if he goes out there? <coughs> shit, all right, all right, I'll go. This is the last time I'm going downstairs, so if you want something from that, else from it, let me know. Now. This water. Oh, you just cleared up easy. Okay. Oh, yeah, I just got played. Okay. Yo, we gonna shoot something or what? Right? Thank you. Jeez, I mean anything at this point. Bro, 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 my bad. No, you're good, you're good. You know what? You're right. You're all right. Let's go shoot. Let's go fucking shoot some shit. Come on! Thank you. I know. Let's go, girl. Okay. Tasha and Philip, bring me here. Who you wearing? Uh, you know, not other than Fashion Nova, baby. You already know. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, Philip, you. Oh, and me, I'm uh, rocking that Jumpman Bar Jordan. All right, go. You see me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, check it out. All right, let me hear the Oscar speech. Come on, give it to me. Well, I'd like to thank the Academy for recognizing me and my role in core time. I mean, when I first got on the set, I thought it wasn't gonna happen either. You know, the whole filming of the movie, but obviously it did because I'm getting this award. Yeah. <laughs> Fill up. Let me hear your Oscar speech, well, mate. Uh, first and foremost, I have to thank God. Hallelujah. I know things are possible. Uh, of course, my family, and last but not least, my main man Derek for capturing. Oh. This, uh, what? I love this guy. Oh, Paying homage. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Oh, extra, extra. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Really, <laughs> young lady. Why are you pointing that thing at me? They're the actors. Because you're the prettiest one here. <laughs> you what? No, I'm nothing. I hate the way she looks at me. Yeah? How's that? I like lunch. <laughs> to me, my life. Dinner. <laughs> Come on. Let's go inside. You guys are ready. Tasha, you for mine? No, okay. thank you. Thank oh. you. Oh. You guys, my life. It's a good start. Okay. Uh, hey, Leo. Yeah. Look at this dude. Oh, Yo, Leo. looking good. Looking, good. Looking, good. looking like yeah. Vin Diesel. Oh, Yo, it's broke man in the house. <laughs> Wrapped it. <laughs> Yo, he got the steel look. <laughs> Love it. Okay, the crew. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, see, you see Always what I'm going up cuss. against? Definitely Isn't not. that them? Who? Oh. In that picture. Mm. Yeah, I think you might be right. Look like the same picture to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> Who are they? The Motley Crew. Mm. Yeah, it's different. Right. Is that real? 
Probably not. I mean, looks like they had a dope special effects crew, though. This looks too real. Mm -hmm. Wait, is that the other crew? What other crew? Sean said he had trouble working with another filming crew. Well, at least that's what Ethan said. Just a minute. Hey, what's up? I was just checking on you in the script. I was about to get on that. I guess I'll leave you to it then. I'll let you know as soon as I have something. You do that. Help me, I think I broke my ankle. Uh, Sean gave that to me to help me write. Um, I'm in a lot of pain. Can you please help me? What are you gonna do with that? No, no! Where's Abigail? Man, you really have the nerve to ask us. Daddy! Hey, Allie. I miss you. I miss you too, Daddy. Daddy, guess what? What? I finally got my red belt in Taekwondo. <laughs> that is fantastic. So you're okay? Yes, I'm all right. You're sure? What's wrong, Daddy? Daddy just had a bad dream. He wanted to make sure you're okay, though. You're too old for nightmares, Daddy. Hello? Hello? seen her all day. None of y'all care what happened to her. 
I mean, nobody said we didn't care, man. We just been watching the movie, man. Watch it. And who says something happened to her anyway? What the fuck is you talking about? Why would you think that? You would think that, being that he was the last person to see Abigail before she went missing. Right. Right, Ethan? What are you trying to say? See, I remember this job I used to work at. Someone stole my phone. See, a few co-workers would help, look for about two minutes, and then went back to their busy lives. Except this one co-worker. See, the brother, unfortunately. I considered him a friend. He looked up and down all day long for that phone. Every nook and cranny. Turns out, he was the one that had it the whole time. Yeah? Well, I'm not one of your shitty friends. <laughs> Bro, sure smells like it. <laughs> He's not even worth it. Whoa. What'd you say? Excuse you? Who's not worth it? You, motherfucker. I get it. You two known each other a week, and now you're Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> Bro, you known your girl about the same amount of time. Like, are you serious? <laughs> Ethan. Ethan. Why? Why is it that women always run away from you? First your baby mama, and now the hippie chick. What, Abigail? You know what? Guys, I, I bet she's out back just slamming it. Just fucking some tree, just giving it all she got. You know, planting it because she likes, you know, she's. Yo, 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 yo
It doesn't matter whether you were doing it wrong or doing it right. If you do it enough, eventually the day comes that you do it right. Well, today is that day, Ethan. What do you need me for? Oh, the million dollar question. Why is Ethan Shaw needed? Well, I need you to do what you do best. Direct. See, I realized something was missing the first couple times around on this. <laughs> I guess it's true what they say. The third time's the charm. <laughs> See, my talent is in producing. I will produce the greatest horror film ever. And I need you to direct the greatest horror film ever. Go along with your psych psychotic plan. Why would I do that? Because you're needed again, Ethan! You and I are alike in that regard. We both need to be needed. Most of the people in the industry suffer from this affliction. This is your chance to show them what happens when they shit all over you. When they throw mud all over your name and bury you with the bones. They left us for dead. The media, the industry, our friends, our families. They all turn their back on us. Now this movie is your chance to put your name right back on top where it belongs and it'll prove to them that they were all wrong. They were all wrong. selected for this project all of you I couldn't pick just anybody I had to be very calculating in my selections and the one thing that you all have in common is family everyone here has little to no family or you're estranged you also have some film talent but not too much <laughs> so I go to small town indie film fests <laughs> and by the way you completely robbed on your best director, but uh, I took care of that. Would you do that? <laughs> there are two ways out of this, Ethan. And I know right now you're already thinking maybe death isn't that bad. No more broken relationships, no more arguments over money, no more custody battles, no more regrets. Or join me. Ethan, and direct. Direct these people to their deaths. It's your chance to make everything right. And it's your chance to be the man that you're supposed to be. How old is Allie? She's 58. Eight. That's not too late. It's not too late for her to see her daddy as a hero. And not a villain.
Everybody, listen up. This is Ethan. I don't have time to explain this, but Sean, he locked me in this room, and right now him and Nico on their way to kill every single one of you. You guys are in the attic, right? Of course. He knows we're in the attic. This is where we always hang out. Come on, guys. Yo, if he's watching, then watch this. Motherfucker. <laughs> what a crybaby, yo. You're a bitch. Ethan. Derek, there's really no time for no fucking middle fingers since Nico's on her way to chop him off. Yo, so what should we do? You need to get out. You ain't got to tell me twice. Grab the walkie-talkie. I got it. Walkie check. Walkie check. Good check. You need to get out of there now. Go to the other side of the attic. Leads to a back door. That'll take you outside. This can't be happening. Yo, fuck this shit, yo. I survived the toughest parts in the hood. Ain't no way in the world I'm dying in the fucking boondocks. Look, look. Nobody's gonna die, all right? We're gonna be all right. We can make it out alive if we stick together. Okay, y'all? He's right, he's right. What are we gonna do? Take the van. Sophie, come on. Check the visor. Yo, why don't we just sit here and wait for help, yo? And be trapped like sitting ducks? No. We could just run. Where? No, the, the van is our best bet, okay? Shit. I saw, uh, I saw the rack of keys hanging by the front door. You sure? Yeah, you I'm sure? Pretty, I'm pretty sure. Man, fuck this shit. Why don't one of y'all hotwire this shit and let's get the fuck out of here? I mean, who knows how to hotwire them? Oh, shit. Nobody? Exactly. Look, how are we gonna get these keys? Ethan, we need your help, man. The coast is clear for now. Go through the front door and grab the key. It should be unlocked. All right, look. I'm gonna go outside and get the keys, okay? Philip, I'm with you at my back. Come on, I got you. I'm going with you. All right, let's go. You wait here, right? Do you hear anything? Yeah. Okay, be careful. I got it. I 
some Leah. Yo, what's taking them so long, yo? I don't know. I mean, we should be back soon. See, see, there go Derek right there. Yeah, but why are you by yourself? Oh, shit, that's Sean. Fuck that. Let's jump his ass. Come get down here. Derek. Got eyes on anything? She's in one of those rooms. But I don't know which one. save you, okay? And then you're gonna help me kill these motherfuckers. One by one by one. Can't you see anymore? Derek and Leah probably need our help. No. We need to stay here. They'll be back. I don't know. It's been a minute since they left. If they was coming back, Probably would have came back already. Yeah, which means they're probably dead. I mean, we don't know that for sure. What do you mean we don't know that for sure? You just said if they was coming back, they'd be back already. Or they need our help. I mean, I think they would do the same for us. Do the same for us? What the fuck is you talking about, Philip? I don't even fucking know these people. I want to get the fuck out of here. We don't owe them nothing. Let's get the fuck out of here. I want to go home. I came out here to film a movie and now I'm fighting for my life. I want to go home. Look, I hear you, yo. It's messed up. But I wouldn't feel right just leaving them behind. I don't feel right about this, fella. I say we get the fuck out of here. I want to go home. All right, look. If they dead, we're going to grab the keys and get as far away from here as possible. All right? I don't know, Philip. Got you. We're going to be all right. Got to go in there. 
Man? Right here. Okay. Hey, move back, okay? I found you, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what, what are you doing? Ethan, we're on the same team, remember? Remember? What are you waiting for? Shoot him! No, shoot this motherfucker! He fucking killed Leah! He killed Leah! And Abigail. Nico killed those people. I just gave the order. Ethan, what the fuck are you waiting for? Shoot this motherfucker. Oh, give me the gun and I will. Is this how you treat me after I've opened up my home to you? I have been nothing but an accommodating host. Gammy even cooks for you. You killed two people! You're wrong. There are four dead people. You give me the gun, I'll fucking kill it, man. Ethan, give me the gun! <laughs> oh shit, Ethan, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Come on, man. Ethan, what are you fucking doing? Let's go, man. Fucking crazy, you shot an unarmed man, man. That's why you gotta go. That's why I gotta stay. Maybe. Somebody's gotta explain to the police, right? Come on. Look, you got your whole life ahead of you. I'm washed up. Go. Take the van. Don't look back. All right? Come on. No, no. Come on, man. There's, there's more to you than that, okay? And I'm sure you're a fucking great dad. What did he say? What did he say? Look, look, look. Once a great director, Always a fucking great director, man. Come on. DC. And you're fucking great. DC. Look, man, I was fucked. I was fucked DC. up with me at the at the dinner table. I didn't mean DC. to come hard at you. I didn't mean to come hard at you, man. Let's just go. It's all right, man. Come on. I'm glad we met. I'll get out of here before I change my mind.
Coach Tab, go and get that cake up. Yeah, yeah, boy, it's your time. Ethan. This is Jenny Granger. She's an executive with Fluorescent Pictures. Nice to meet you. The pleasure's all mine. I honestly couldn't wait to meet you. I've never seen a film look so real before. I'm officially <laughs> a fan. Thank you. Our goal was to make the film as authentic as possible. I think we pulled that off. <laughs> <laughs> you did that and then some. That scene where you shot Sean, I mean, you must have rehearsed that a million times to get it that perfect. <laughs> you know, we didn't rehearse that at all. <laughs> I think we just got lucky. <laughs> Is this how you treat me after I've opened up my home to you? I have been nothing but an accommodating host. Gammy even cooks for you. You killed two people! You're wrong. There are four dead people. You give me the gun, I'll fucking kill it, man. You to give me the gun! <laughs> I can't believe you shot me. I can't believe you told me to. It hurts like hell. You were pretty close. <laughs> I guess we got lucky. <laughs> I'll be in touch. I think I speak for everyone when I say I want to see more of Ethan Shaw. <sighs> Didn't I say this would happen? Didn't I? Yes. Yes, you did. That's why I chose you for this, Ethan. You are the only one that could have pulled this off. <laughs> Take your pictures. Allie! Hey, I missed you. We missed you, too. We? We. Ethan, can I get an interview with you for the reviewer? Yes, 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 yes. Don't you hear the fans? <clears throat> we are live at the reviewer with director Ethan Shaw. Yes, it is. My name is David, and I'm calling to get call time for Tuesday. Uh, and I'm dying to play this role. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us on this episode of The Review. <laughs> 